Welcome back to the Extended Play Podcast. This is part two of the Befuddled episode. We're going to pick up with the playlist challenge starting right now. Okay, now it's time for the playlist challenge. I'm Libby, I'm the guest here, and I was asked to choose the theme for the playlist challenge, and I chose commands, as in any song title that uh, tells you to do something. And I I liked this one because commands as song titles are sometimes imploring, they're sometimes vaguely threatening, (laughs) they're sometimes interesting suggestions. I just thought it made for a really really ripe area to a, a, a nice playground for us. So, so that's, uh, that's what I have for you. Very good. And I will go first with a uh, song suggested by E. Um, I'm the only one that didn't get a new partner today. Oh, I had sorry, to just man. Fucking do something. No, but I mean, me. no, <laughs> we made the right decision. Someone had to take the bullet. I stand right? by this decision. No, I think we have the right arrangement because yeah. you always give me, uh, you, you feed me lots of new stuff to dig into and like, so I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Yeah. And I, the reaction of, I, I Libby, I can't wait to hear what you say about tank stuff. Oh, dude, I am. That's why I'm here today. Yep. I'm excited to get into this. All yes, right. Yes. All right. So without any further ado, yeah. I will get started with number five. And number five in the commands playlist challenge for me is Put the Knife Away by Goldfinger. Um, I don't like this kind of music. I was so curious. I didn't know your take on it. We never talk about it. No, we don't. I, I don't like, I don't, okay. I'm going to just ska punk. Pop punk. Yeah. Uh, I call it some 41 music. <gasps> oh man. That's all I think about. <laughs> right. Um, mostly due to the vocal style. Oh, okay. I don't like it when it sounds oh, whiny. Oh, sure. Okay. Hey, nah, hey, nah, hey. <laughs> I just don't, I don't get it. Like, what are you doing? What are we like 15? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I never, I never. Uh, no, you never connected with it. Never, whatever was my jam. I like Green Day, but I, I think that they, I mean, they're not one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, they don't fit squarely in the genre. No, but, they do. A hundred percent. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Something about that worked for me. Okay. I don't know what. Okay. Um, but yeah. Now, mm-hmm. that being said, it is catchy. Okay. I wouldn't turn it off. Okay. You know, it wouldn't be like, oh shit. It wouldn't be like, you know, a visceral reaction like to Kid Rock or something. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Um, I do like the bridge in this song with the harmonies. Okay. I mean, yeah. there, there were some nuggets yeah, in there. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, you know, time for my uh, amateur audio dork again okay. assessment, uh, which uh, is embarrassing with, with Libby here, the yeah, professional. No kidding, but, right. um, uh, but the drums are oddly high in the mix and the whole thing is way too compressed. So oh, okay. I looked... I'm like, I bet this was late 2000s, you know, the whole loudness word, yeah, but it's sure. 2017. Oh, so, so no uh, excuse. Yeah, get it together, Goldfinger. <laughs> no no excuse for the, <laughs> for uh, being uh, too much, just too loud. Yeah. Um, but. I mean, yeah. I thought you'd like the speed of it. That was the only thing I, I could, right. I do. I yeah. mean, I, I listened to the whole thing and I okay. liked it. Okay. Um, it's just like, you know, once he starts totally talking, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, mean, totally. I wish I could mute him selectively. <laughs> <laughs> Did you listen to that song, Libby? Uh. Wait, no, shoot. I forgot to do the, to. the optional no, 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 homework. No, 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 you don't, you don't have to. No. Opt- I, I don't listen to his, don't worry. Or vice versa. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number four for me is a song called Fall In by Cloud Nothings. This one to me is very similar to Goldfinger. Okay. Okay. Right. I mean, again, I don't know if there's a nuance I'm missing mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, but it's similar punky vocals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would right? say it's punky. Yeah. Um, this one, the reason why it's number four and Goldfinger is number five is this one at least sounds 
like more fresh and vital. Okay. Like it, I guess it has an urgency, an organicness. Yeah. Right. It, there's something about it that just seems a little less manufactured. Mm, I buy that. Right. Yeah. Um, now that being said, that's a double edged sword. Um, and by the way, just kind of apropos of nothing, but also because I still have our critics discussion in my head. I did look this up on pitchfork. Okay. 8.6 for this album by yes. cloud. Nothings. Yes. Okay. I mean, I like so, it a lot. All right. I don't. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing about this and a lot of other music that sounds like this. Okay. I don't see how any handful of dudes couldn't reproduce this. Mm. Me, you, maybe Libby on drums. I don't know. Nothing <laughs> about it jumps out to me as this is why this is unique or mm. talented. Okay. I'm not saying it's a, it's a terrible experience. Okay. I just don't get, I, I, I guess when I'm listening to music, I'm expecting something I can't do. I thought you'd think the drums on this track were. They're not bad. They're okay. not bad. I'm not saying I wouldn't have to practice for a few years. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but, but the, the, the talent of the vocalist is not something I don't think couldn't be reproduced. Yeah. The lyrics aren't, I know we can write better lyrics. Right. <laughs> sure. right? And you know, guitar or whatever, add enough distortion. No one can tell. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It just, I, I don't hate it. And if you put it on and we were just hanging out, I wouldn't have a problem with yeah, it. Sure. It's not like I don't like the song. Yeah. It's more, I'm more irritated by the critical acclaim. I see. That's, that, fair. that's what I'm more irritated that's fair. by. So I don't dislike the song. Yeah. Um, I'll mm-hmm. listen to it every now and then. I'm not going to skip past it when it's going through my, yeah, my sure, library. Sure. I just don't, there's a, I feel like there's a whole lot of this though, that mm. to me sounds mm. alike. Okay. And I'm like, I, I don't, it's like, I, I, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should start a band. Jeez, you've said you've been saying this for 25 I know, years i know if not more but um no so i don't i don't hate it and it definitely feels more organic than than the goldfinger stuff i just it, there, this is uh ironically given the episode that we're in here yeah kind of a blind spot for me as to like i don't get it just don't get it yep that's fair not that you not that i need to approve of it no but i, I i'm always seeking your approval <laughs> <laughs> no because there's bands that sound like this that i don't like for for whatever yeah, reason, yeah, yeah. like like car seat headrest, I'm supposed to like, and it's supposed to, it sounds That's actually like a thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm even lost at the at the name <laughs> of the band. All right. At number three, taking a sharp stylistic turn, is "Dance Yourself Clean" by LCD Sound System. So uh, this song is this week's Bob Mould Award winner for the Too Low in the Vocal Mix. It's almost un You can't even hear him at the beginning no, of the song. No, and which, dude, it's really bad. Dude, pisses me off. Now, um, I hated this song until three minutes and 10 seconds. <laughs> that's a long time to hate a song. That's my point. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, I'm convinced that this is Retribution for Dragon. <laughs> no. All right, this song's nine minutes long. Oh, is it nine minutes long? It is long? nine minutes long. So I load it up. I see nine minutes. I'm like, all right, touche. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um so so yeah i hated it until 310 but then i was pissed off i had to wait until 310 to get yeah there. it takes too long it takes way too long yeah. he could have accomplished uh, when i say he i think it's one guy yeah one, pretty right? much no it, they, i mean they're pretty much a okay. band i think but right. yeah they, so yeah. they him could yeah. have um it did have to be three minutes and i and this is very i i get it, ironic from a guy metallica fan <laughs> you know people are like does that song really need to be nine minutes okay i get it um, but for what I think is a gimmick, it, we don't need to wait three minutes for the gimmick. Oh, so the whole point of that it's quiet is I think gimmicky. it's not evolving. I the see. song isn't growing in the first three minutes. I see. It's three minutes of the same fucking okay. thing. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. Um, I don't think the lyrics are super repetitive, so it's not, I, I don't think it, I don't think the three minutes are used to build to anything. I see. Um, it's just, oh shit, here's the drop, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Could have happened after a minute, minute. And okay. Half. Fair. Um, now that being said, the synths are massive and wide, and I'm going to use uh, Pitchfork's word here because I like it. Yeah, meaty, <laughs> meaty synths. They said meaty, and I'm like, that's perfect. <laughs> that's why they get the big bucks. Yeah. And uh, Pitchfork gave this album a nine point two. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, you know, and I'm not going to get in. I'm not going to yeah. fucking parse that. But okay, 
Right. <laughs> just, <laughs> just fine. Just fine. <laughs> um, lyrics are pretty good, I think. Um, I, I don't like having to do this much work to figure out what the song's about. <laughs> I don't. Especially a song that's essentially a dance song, right? See, I love when you do unintentional segues because yeah. my next point is this could have been an instrumental. It could have been. Could have been. I mean, it's, and I, I had to, uh, you know, to do my due diligence, I have to go down, okay, what the fuck does this song mean? <laughs> I spent so much time on Genius when we're... It's a great resource. Right. And it, it's basically, you know, a cathartic, clean yourself, mm-hmm. you know, uh, purge yourself of mm-hmm. all this stuff. And it's it's not bad. I, yeah. And I do think that maybe I will, God knows I'm going to look for an edited version. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I may like it more given a little bit more time. Mm. Um, I just thought it was a little self-indulgent to mm. do mm. the three, the three minutes to start. Sure. But again, you know, that's uh, a drop is fucking killer though. Oh, it's, it's, I mean, it's really great. You, you can make the argument that it's, it's, uh, it's relative, right? The longer you go, the more it hits. <laughs> that's right. You do it 10 seconds in. It's, you know, isn't that a bit on, doesn't Chappelle have a bit about how, how long the drop goes or something like that? Where everyone's going, Oh, here, it comes, be, here might, it comes. Yeah. It might even be Keen Peelers, but yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah right, I think it's Keen Peel. I think yep. you're right. Uh, but no, not bad. I do think I'll like it more. And it, it piques my curiosity with LCD sound system. Yeah. I know they're critical darlings. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to get into it more now that I know kind of what it's about. Uh, it may or may not be my thing, but I'm, I'm curious enough to find out. So cool. That puts it solidly at number three. The, the synths plus the live drums to me, that's like a winning combination. Yeah. No, that is good. It's unique. Right. Yeah. Like you don't hear that. And they're very, right. ra- the drums are very raw. It's like nine inch nails. Yes, it is like Nine mm-hmm. Inch Nails. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Number two is a very cleverly titled Remember, which is re... Motherfucker, is this a semicolon or a colon? It's a colon. God damn it. How old am I going to be before I know the <laughs> I difference between the two? <laughs> I don't know. A decently well-educated man. I will go to my grave. <laughs> I don't know. Each week you're, you're, each week you're testing <laughs> that right? hypothesis. Okay, so, well but it's colon. <laughs> it's a colon. Okay. Two dots. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to, okay, I need a device. So semi is because there's a comma there and it's only semi a colon. There you go. All right. All right. Stalagmite, stalactite. <laughs> I don't know that. Right. Well, there you go. Fucking yeah. earth science. <laughs> All right. Now let's just fucking redo number two here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking earth science. <sighs> number two is the cleverly titled re colon member, which you would just say is remember yeah. by... And I know there's an Icelandic pronunciation. I'm not going to try it. Um, Olafur Arnalds. It's Oliver. I think it's like Oliver, but yeah. I'm so pissed at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking colon. <laughs> First note here is piano, lo-fi, ambient. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I knew you'd like this. Yeah, I figured this was like, you yeah. know, and uh, really a coin flip on between this and the one that was ultimately number one. Um, but yeah, I definitely, this hits a lot of my uh, preferences. Um, like I said, great song name. And in, uh, and just kind of looking, learning about the artist, because um, this is an easy album buy, right? It's an obvious album oh, buy for absolutely. me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, um, you'll love it. Uh, but apparently on the album, he used a system called Stratus. Yeah, it's crazy. He invented it, didn't he? Which, uh, yes, just once I want you to not fucking know Sorry, the note that man. I bring up, you know? <laughs> God damn it. Sorry. All right. For everyone else listening at home. Um, but he he plays a note on his piano, and then there's some software that it runs through, and it drives two other self, self-playing self pianos to play something similar. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, a you know, some algorithm says if he plays this, do that, and then it creates basically like this army of pianos. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really fucking cool and and a great use of and we won't make a whole episode out of it, but a great use of where technology yeah. can enhance the artist and not replace the human aspect of it. Right. Um, so uh, the drums are a nice touch to keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's 
you know, that makes it even easier to digest, you know, in case it feels like it's kind of dragging on a bit. Yeah. And not all the songs have that. So it, it's a nice break with, you'll, you'll enjoy that in the album because some songs are just purely ambient piano really. Okay. And then, so to have a track with, with drums is nice. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And, um, and, uh, seeing as how this is number two, you know what this feels like? E? What does it feel like? Yeah. I'll tell you. And thanks for just picking up on it this time. Yeah. I got it this time. Um, it is, uh, it's like a gin and tonic. Okay. That's light on the tonic, <laughs> a little heavy on the gin. You're getting a lot of pine, okay. right? Oh, I like Okay. Right. I, there's no lime. No, no lime. No, there's, no. there's no place for lime in this. And you're on the back deck of a cruise ship outside Fairbanks, Alaska at 10, 14 PM. <laughs> is that that's so that's what that song feels like. Okay. <laughs> All positive things I'm assuming. Of course. Assuming, so yeah. Would you not want to have a gin and tonic and I a mean, cruise ship in Alaska? I don't well, want to be anywhere near a cruise no, ship. No, agreed. <laughs> uh, let's say, let's replace it with a private yacht. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, number one, then, is Hang With Me by Robin. Um, it's weird. I like it, but there's it, it, simultaneously not a whole lot to say. Oh. Um, it's good old fashioned pop. Yeah. And I like me some pop. I like anything that sounds eighties ish, mm -hmm. uh, which this does. Um, the lyrics are more heady than the music would lead you to believe. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. That's what I like about ramen generally. Right. I like when it's kind of, uh, it kind of sneaks up on you. Uh, also sneaky, how good her voice is. Yeah. Um, either I have a note here, either it's really pure or that's incredible auto tune. Right. But I don't I, think so. I, mean, I tend to think it's the former. Yeah, I think she sings that way live. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I have a note that she's like the Swedish pink or... Oh, man. <laughs> that you're not say, doing yourself any favors. No, I just, but I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to say swink. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but I think in, in presentation, not in, in character. Oh, just being short-haired Yeah, short-haired blonde chick okay. who does pop music. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, don't read too deep into <laughs> okay. it. Okay. Um, but, the, uh, but I do love the crisp, clean bass mm. um and again lyrics are better than um than i would have assumed i, I really you know and I'm, this is another one i'm going to dig into more yeah i don't know much i saw her name come up a lot you know in acclaim mm -hmm. and i didn't know much so i'm kind of glad that you uh forced me to go in that door so i'm going to listen to it a lot for sure cool i mean i do not like pop music and i like robin yeah. i don't there, there's something whether i don't know if it's i'm picking up on the lyrics or just whatever it is there's something about her that i just really also just like her persona and like you watch her music videos, she's just so kind of odd. Like pink. I really like, no, but pink is intentionally like, I'm going to call myself the color of my fucking hair. Right. I put an right. exclamation point in my name. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> I love that we touch on there for that. Um, right. Yeah. All right. I, I, I'm also a fan of Robin, not to, not to step no, on please. your playlist challenge here. I, 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 this is a good reminder to listen to her again. Cause it's been a minute, but I feel like for me, she's like, frosting on a balloon like there's this element of like if i slice through this it's gonna surprise me in some way oh, it's gonna yeah. make me a little sad it's gonna like it's it's and it's not quite like it's it's not quite a full meal you know but it, <laughs> sure. there's so it's like sweet and and always a little sad yeah. and like leaves me feeling a little bit like sickly but fine like happy that's how yeah. robin makes me feel i like that um, and for our listening audience, I don't know, I don't, I'm guessing our listening audience isn't very pop centric, but mm. right. Um, two Robin adjacent, not, not Robin adjacent, but Robin things worth checking out are one, her performance on Saturday Night Live. Um, I can't remember if it's call your girlfriend or I don't remember what song it is, but then, um, she gives this fucking whack job dance performance, which is kind of her thing. And then the SNL, um, cast, after hours at like 4 a.m. in the morning, recreated the entire performance and it's fucking fantastic. Another thing to watch is there's a great clip of, I think it's a New York City subway of after a Robin show, the entire subway platform breaking out into song to one of her songs. And it's just so endearing. And it's such a moment of like pure joy and bliss and togetherness. Um, yeah, I really enjoy that. I love that. All right, so now we'll go over to E for the songs that he was given from Libby. Okay, and the pressure on me to <laughs> to 
to not anger my friend or disappoint oh, her. You can you can make me mad. I'm really excited about the discussion. Oh, okay. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about me. Yeah, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't give a else. shit what I think. Yeah, that wasn't clear for Fuck that 15 episodes by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I no. Th- this was great. It was great to have another to, to mix it up, and this was definitely mix it mixing it up. So, um, Olivia, I think I mentioned in our text exchange ex- exchanges in in um, in preparation that I I rank these on the spot. So I have not thought about what the worst. Great. The, I'm the, excited. The, the not the worst, but the number five is actually I have. That is a lie. Now that I've explained that, I knew right away what my number five was. And my number five is Take Me, I'm Yours by Mary Clark. Saw that coming a little bit, but I Did want you? to hear about okay. it. Okay. Okay. So I listened to this. This is important for context. I listened to this song, I think third out of the five songs Libby gave me. And it was such a departure from the other two that it really took me aback. So I I think for that reason, it probably got a little lower than it otherwise would have. I don't know. Anyway, um, I was really put off by the funk guitar and the horns and the disco aspect of it. Um, it's not a kind of music I like, like I I was trying to think like, all right, so I like P funk, like I like Parliament Funkadelic a little bit. Like I like songs by them and they're clearly, obviously it's in the name, but they're funk, but there is something about this sound that I'm not crazy about. I don't know what it is. Uh, I wrote, (laughs) I'm just looking, my notes are always fun in retrospect, especially when it's been a while since I've listened to it. I wrote put off by funk guitars and horns, not my kind of thing. And then I underlined at all. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so so sorry, Libby. Um, no, I'm not offended. I think it's great. Um, the strings are super disco, um, and there's like gospelish kind of call and response backing vocals, which I have no problem with. But I I don't know, just all com- combined together, I wasn't crazy about. Um, the lyrics are just for me like rote love song BS. Um, put your arms around me. You've got the power over me. Come on, baby, love me. I can't <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's why I don't listen to Motown. Like mm. I can acknowledge that Motown is a thing and it's about the sound and maybe not necessarily the lyrics, um, but I don't like either. So it doesn't resonate with me. Um, you bring out the woman in me, these kind of things like I've heard a thousand times before. Um, it seems to me like what I thought is like, I feel like Libby must've had a very personal experience with this song to be included in the list. Because interesting, because it seems like they're a diamond. Like you could find five thousand songs mm. that sound like this. Yeah, that's fair. When I, okay, I did. I was exposed to this song when I was falling in love with my now partner. So that mm. probably has something to do mm. with it. I also, um, in terms of the the playlist challenge, yeah, being commands. Um, I just thought this one was a good, just a good wild card to throw in there, okay. like. It's also just like I don't listen really to disco at all, but except for this song. And um, I really I do like the syncopation and the horns. I do like just some of the disco. A lot of the disco flourishes work for me in this song that in other songs would just like make me really annoyed. Um, So but it's not it's not like necessarily in my like top five of all time. But for the commands challenge, you know, I was kind of like, this is an interesting one. Totally. But, uh, But I hear you. Totally. Uh, you know, and, and I appreciate that too, because I would say that the other, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the other four more fit together as sort of like different variations yeah. on a flavor, right? Like on a flavor. Yeah. Um, I also didn't want to just throw you like five of the same exact right, kind of thing. Right, right. No, but, I, yeah. I totally appreciate that. But I did, I'm sorry. Just for comedic <laughs> effect, another another note I took was it took all I had to finish listening to this song. <laughs> To be like, fair, it is long-winded and repetitive. Yeah, I do hear that. It's super long. And then there's like a long instrumental part where I'm like, this is going to have to resolve itself. She's going to have to come in with the vocals and I'm going to have to stick it through. But I really don't want to. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fair. I hear you. Yeah. Um, um, number four is going to be Cut Your Bangs by Radiator Hospital. Hmm. 
so funny that cut the song title cut your bangs would come in the same episode that cut your hair by pavement <laughs> i thought that earlier <laughs> yeah it's so weird that that happened and side note i love this album cover oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. absolutely mm. um Porch song is so good i remember uh Back in the day, Libby, right away, one of the first bands you told me about was Radiator Hospital. And I think I that the first band that you talked about that I was like, oh, I don't know who they are at all. I know nothing about them. And I remember trying to get into them at the time and maybe just not paying enough attention. Um, I like this. I was totally mm-hmm. into it. Um, it's poppy in like a jingly, jangly, indie rock kind of way. Um, it's got a great like power pop rhythm to it. You're definitely bouncing to it, nodding your head. Um, lyrically, there's a line that really struck me. It was, uh, I think it's, it's repeated a a bunch of times where he, is it he or she? Yeah. Doesn't matter. I guess it's not relative, but, um, yeah, when you lie to me, it's in the small stuff. And I thought that Mm -hmm. was such a, like a very, um, succinct relationship observation. I don't know. It really struck me. I thought it was really smart. Um, there's some gruesome, yeah. oh. there's some gruesome Im- imagery like back to back with that, where he talks, where he talks about um, ma- some maggots doing something. And that was like, I'm like, whoa, where's this coming from? Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of, um, uh, I, I like them because they're not nihilistic, but like, um, but definitely deal with the, you know, deal head on with a lot of like really morose. Yeah. Shit, including sure. Just like, this is a song like that really gets into like the nitty gritty of yes. death alongside just kind of like bopping like, absolutely. Hey, I d- you're not totally truthful with me. And then, <laughs> right. you know, the maggots around your heart make themselves a home and let's <laughs> right. rock out. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, uh, getting to the, the subtleties of the messy part of relationships and then just how it hits emotionally. Right. In sort of gruesome yeah. way. No, I, I dug it. Um, there's a mumbly part I don't like in the middle, but everything else I'm like, this is for me. This is just good times. This is a song you put on a mix when you're hanging out with your friends and everybody's like, yeah, it's a good song. I mean, I feel yeah, like it's definitely. undeniable. Nice. Uh, that will bring us to number three, which I'm going to put at, uh, I'm going to give to A Spill Your Lungs by Julie Doyron. The opening bit is fucking rad. It's like it really is. lo-fi Sabbath. Like uh, it's just so punchy. Yeah, it's so unique. It's like that. It's got a very '90s grungy feel, but within the indie rock influence, and super unique. I love the opening bit. Yeah. The, the, spoiler alert: these last three songs I really liked, and it was hard to rank them one above the other. Nice. Yeah. Um, the, it's I wrote down the notes slow core like the it reminded me of the band low in that there's a very slow sort of methodic part of it I don't know if it's at the middle or at the end but you know that that style I feel like it's so hard if you slow down the tempo of a song for you to for for the listener to maintain interest and I had no problem doing that in this song I really yeah. liked it her voice uh th- so Typically, I would not like a singer's voice like this, where she ch- where she jumps up in. I don't know. You're the you would know technically. Is it key or pitch? Like, yeah, I mean she she pitch. Yeah, like just like kind of shifts from this sort of like chest voice into not quite head voice, yeah. but she's like yeah. There's there's a pretty large range that she's yeah. leaping through. Like yeah. stop for a trip. Like like in in a verse. Or like she'll she'll jump up. And normally I would not like that, but it's a smooth enough transition, but also kind of dramatic that it makes for interesting listening. Um mm, yeah. There's a like I said there's a creep, like Radiohead creep like loud guitar like around the 3 minute mark where you're like not expecting it and it's fucking awesome. Like yeah. It's loud, it's way up in the mix and it you you you, you don't know what's coming and it sounds awesome. Um Yeah. T- yeah, I love the the dissonance in the song. Yes, and like the hundred percent. The also like the cleanliness of the vocal in contrast to the real dirtiness yeah. of the instrumental is something that when when done right, I really like. Absolutely, no, I agree with it. I I totally dug it. I wrote the word timeless because it bridges these gaps between different styles of music, 
And um, yeah, I, I really nice. dug it. I have no familiarity with this artist at all or this song, which like now I got to go check it out, which I really appreciate. Oh, awesome. That's like such a, I'm, I'm so, I'm so happy to have, um, yeah, no, shared, I, shared a little nugget. That's the best part of these, right? Tank. I mean, yeah. oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we'll go number two. We're going to put, um, get disowned by hop along. Yeah, yeah, I was um, vaguely familiar with Hop Along, and I knew Libby that you liked them. Um, love them. Yeah, love but, them. There but, we go. But give me, do your worst. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, there's no worse. Uh, I really dug this. I listened to not this album, but I think the album after that when it came out because there was a lot of press around it, um, at least in the shit I read. <laughs> yeah, was that was that uh, Bark Your Head Off? Yes. Dog? Yes. Yeah. And I remember really, I'm like, whoa like vocally what's her Francis Quinlan is that her name yes yep um incredibly vocally like she's doing something different and she is next level and blowing you away with the, the simultaneously um catchy and weirdness of her voice um yeah. she's like again with the sort of pitch shifting she's doing um I, I don't know so what I wrote down is that I remember when I first listened to Hop Along I was like I can do this for like two songs and after that it gets to me um the voice becomes uh, i don't even know what it is it's just too much it's too much and and there are there are plenty of bands that are like this for me where like uh the walkman are another example where like i can listen to two songs by the walkman and that's it i gotta turn it off because it's just too i don't know what it is intense it's, it's too intense maybe that's it mm -hmm. um Anyway, she's got an incredible rock voice, um, even rawer than I remember. Like, she's got some gravel in her voice, which I don't remember from the album I listened to uh, previously. Um, the Meteor Make Me Young line, I don't know what the fuck it means, if it even means anything. It's awesome. Like, what a cool play on words. Like, she's just sort of screaming, Meteor Make Me Young. I don't know if it has to, like, like a meteor being destructive and bringing things back to where they started or whatever. Maybe she's a dinosaur. <laughs> it's, it's possible um yeah the, 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 the lyrics have a great blend of of imagery and like um storytelling and introspection she's kind of all over the place um in a way that i liked like she talks about her uncle knocked out a bear with a frying pan like <laughs> i don't know what that has to do with the rest of the song but i found it cool um i know it's probably surreal in a way and i'm uh, stepping on my own argument from earlier but uh, the, and the line that got me was greater than my love gone out the door is the love that I ignored. And yeah, that's just heavy. And you can unpack that. I feel like for a long time. Um, yeah. So the combination of that stuff and the, just the sonic experience of the song, I, I super dug it. I'm so happy that you, that you love this. Yeah. I'm hop along is one of my favorite bands of all time. That's awesome. And I did actually, um, I don't know if I ever told you this E, but, um, uh, went to see them live in 2018 and then ran into them at a bar later. And oh, yeah. Them for That's a while, right. Which was, um, like, also random and cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're really cool people. They're really nice, <laughs> which is, like, a nice bonus on top of them being really, really fucking awesome live. Yeah. Like, really, really good. So great. That is one of the... Tank and I have talked about this before. That's one of the rewarding things about liking these sort of smaller off-the-radar bands is that they're more accessible. Yeah, right? like they we, were, they were, they couldn't have been cooler. That's um, so great. Yeah, they were. Yeah, and and Frances Quinlan is, uh, at what how she sounds on the record, she sounds like that live. Yeah, just like no no tricks, no gimmicks. Love it. Like raw talent. Love love her. Awesome. Love them. Yeah, yeah. And she's anyway. got she's got solo stuff too, right? She does. Um, I'll I'll say I don't. It her solo record that came out after Breaker Head Off Dog. I didn't really care for. Okay. It was um a lot more like electronica leaning. Ah. Um, and I really like. Um, I love all of their stuff, but especially this Get Disowned is also the album name, yeah. and then um, the um the former one uh 
Painted Shut, right? Yeah. I, I've yeah. listened to that album yeah. actually a billion times and sometimes forget what it's called. Um, <laughs> but yeah, those are a little grittier and I like those more. So the veering into like a cleaner sound with her gotcha. wasn't my favorite. Gotcha. I like her like screamo yodeling is like how <laughs> yes. it feels, yes. you know? Yes. Um, she's like flipping her register yes. and 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 just like bearing down through it but in the most liberated way it's this amazing combination that i just i've never still still haven't heard and i'm sure people do it but i just like i've just cannot find the same satisfaction anywhere else and i don't need to because you know right there they are right right no that's awesome i appreciate getting to listen to it so that leaves uh number one which is crane your neck by lady lamb so I push my limbs all forward like a tree does in a storm And then I walk into my kitchen and I lean against the window I'm as calm as a baby lamb that is being led I'm as blue as blood Before the blood goes red Uh Again, another artist who I'm completely unfamiliar with. Um, right away, I got like, to me, to my old ears, I got Ani DeFranco vibes of like, uh, the, the guitar is being played uh, in a percussive style that I kind of liked. Um, and, and not lyrically and not, I think, vocally, but just there was something about the the song itself that, that made me feel that. Um, but then there's like, the song goes a certain way for the first two minutes of it, and then two minutes in there's a breakdown where all the, almost all the instrument instrumentation drops off and it's just the singer's voice. Um, she sings, I'm as blue as blood before the blood, uh, before the blood goes red. And I'm like, that is a fucking cool line. Um, and then she shuts. So it starts from a sort of, um, very traditional singing way to more like a shouting thing where she gets super emotional with it. Um, I don't know. Things, yeah, like tears. Yes, and things like change dramatically three different times in this song, but never in a way where you're like, that doesn't make sense. Why would they? Uh, maybe not like LCD sound system, like Tank you were talking about, right? Right, where it felt more random. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, this is like, oh, it makes sense they would have gone here. Um, so they go from that like Ani DeFranc- DeFranco uh, percussive guitar sound to a more jangly, strokesy Arctic Monkeys type thing in the middle, which I really liked. And then... Another huge shift later on in the song where it slows way down after the after drums have come in where they weren't before. And then there's like a long section where it's almost like virtually a cappella. I don't know. This song was all over the place in the best kind of way. And um, I just found it fascinating. It's a song where there's no way I am appreciating it enough the first time I listen to it. And I think I only listen to it twice. I feel like I need to listen to it five times to really get it. Yeah, I mean, I know I want to listen to it now. Yeah, it's so strange in the best kind of way. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I know nothing about, is this, the, I don't know how old the song is. I don't know how, if this artist is still around. Let me, can you? Yeah, she's, she's current. I believe this song is from 2018. Okay. Um, it's, but it's, I'm a, I'm a little late to the party. It's like my favorite song of the last year. Um, oh, cool. In, in terms of like, it came up on, you know, like Spotify radio or something from a playlist I have. Yeah. And, and it's so captivating. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I, what a, what, it's talking about, talk about powerhouse vocalists, like, yeah. whoa, and just breathing through these lyrics, Um, this is like, when I still had a car and would drive places, I would like, just, this is a really fun one to sing along oh, with, I or to try to, Yeah, and, and that one line, um, where she says, how it hurts, even in the sun, it's a goddamn joke, how we can hurt even in the sun, I think she says, and that, actually like gives me chills every time i hear it still and i've heard this song you know hundreds of times now and um god yeah it just it just tickles me um and i yeah i think the song is i i was i'm really surprised this was your your number one oh, okay. um i i thought i thought that this would be lower i don't know why so that's really fun no i super dug it it's six minutes and 27 seconds and every second you know like she uses every single second of the song yes and you don't need it to be any shorter or any longer. It's the perfect length. So, yeah, I feel like this song deserves its own musical. You know, like totally. here's a musical for everything. Now I'm like, can we just make a whole musical based on this song, <laughs> like so that I can just hear a lot of different versions of it, yes. like just by her? <laughs> yes, totally agree. 
Okay. Fun. Yeah, I'm going to swing it over to, uh, we'll, we will swing it over to Libby for her songs, which are chosen by Tank. All right. Should be Tank. interesting. Yeah. I I don't know. I mean, now I know a little more about your about your taste in music and I know a little bit more about you, but, you know, getting kind of like a cold five, I was kind of like, all right, let's see, because I know you have a history of sometimes punking. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, but OK, I'm looking at my notes. I'm going to I'm going to I ranked them ahead of time. I, I, I'm i a planner. Um, you and me both. Number five. OK, great. Um, number five. Alice in Chains, check my brain. I, I, I don't, I definitely don't hate it. I, I really dig the just like tight, thick instrumental. Like it's a tight mix. You can almost like see the waveform in your brain. It's just like bars of sound, you know, right. it's just like thick. Um, I, I dig that. When the vocals came in, I was disappointed. Um, I should say this is my first time hearing this song, also my first time hearing Alice in Chains. Um, so this is also just like an intro for me. All right, um, we're gonna. I'm just gonna let that slide. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, thank you for the introduction. I should say. Yeah, um, but, and this is not. This is not their critical work, right? I just I kind of threw it in as like, hey, this is a little bit later down the line, just to kind of see because I, I guess I assumed you would be okay. Well, I've heard the old stuff, right? So. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. This becomes your entry point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I definitely didn't definitely didn't hate it. I I felt like the vocals came in and I was a little let down. They felt too clean. Like I do like a contrast, you know, especially when you have something like gritty and like like sandy molasses in the instrumental. Like you, you it's nice to have it, it's it's nice to have that contrast in the vocal. But I felt like it was too clean, and the harmonies felt like really deep 90s in a way that um wasn't working for me i don't know what it reminded me of but like music i didn't choose on a road trip with my family <laughs> like um not so much the you know the heaviness but like the the vocal harmony specifically um and i think also just like hearing the word california sung slowly um puts me in the mind of um i don't know like chili peppers and stuff and i was <laughs> just like ah, no yeah. thank you yeah. <laughs> no it's kind of a astute observation though because this is the first album without lane staley so okay you know lane staley was their vocalist who you know i hold in high regard but you know he their classic materials with him so this is the first one without him so it makes sense that there's some growing pains of not knowing quite how to use a new vocalist yet Interesting. See, this is great. I'm getting the the encyclopedic uh, knowledge <laughs> with my sort of just like ignorant first impressions. Well, that's what you know. It's, it's, that's what the playlist challenges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. That's, that's true. Great. That's true. Um, OK, so I'll move on. Number four was uh, Metallica. You must burn. All right, yeah, let's hear it. I, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I do, I do dig it. Like I, I, I again, similar to Alice in Chains tune. Like I, the mix is so tight, it's so packed. It's, yeah. it's, um, but it's also uh, a really, a really clean arrangement. Like I really like the arrangement, the song structure, amazing, lovely dialogue between like the guitar and Kit. Like I just, yeah. there's a wonderful conversation happening there through the whole track. That's so tight and also just like really fluid at the same time i really dig that um 
I love that there's a solo section, you know? I just like, ugh. You don't hear that so much. At least I don't hear that so <laughs> no. much. And I really like a solo, well, you it's know? It's kind of a relic um, of a bygone time. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, which, great segue into um, that this is actually quite a recent track, right? Isn't this from... Yeah, it's three... Is this from April? Yes, it's from three months ago. Yeah. Yeah, and so... Oh, hold on, hold on. Please tell uh, me this is not the first time you've heard Metallica. Uh, not the first okay. time. The first focused listen, I would say. Uh, that's um, fair. That's fair. That was, that was the point, so that's fair. Yeah, I, um, my, the reason it's four on my list is, gosh, you know, uh, looking into the lyrics, um, this seems to be, especially because it came out in April, seems to be sort of like a rant against cancel culture, which is fair. Don't get me wrong. I'm here for the discussion about whether or not cancel culture is an effective way to shift our, you know, larger social dialogue, um, but I feel like it can be kind of tone deaf, um, you know, depending on who's talking about it. Mm. But, you know, at the same time, I don't know. That's that's what put this at four also in, in you know, in the context of some of the other stuff that you shared. But yeah. I'm, I'm curious. What what do you think, Tank? Um, I'll, I'll agree that when I found out I love this was when I got the album and, you know, like everyone with their favorite band there's you go into this deep analysis when you get it right and you go through all these phases of different favorite songs this was my favorite on the album for a while just because i love this sludgy deep heavy like sad but true and dream no more there's always one of these like just grinding heavy tracks so i I dug that i will admit i was mildly disappointed when i read the lyrics as well it's my least favorite lyric james hetfield the singer who writes the lyrics is not a talented writer but he still writes great songs because he speaks from the heart and it's, you know, he's a simple guy who just talks about how he feels, which is kind of a rare thing in this genre. Um, but yeah, I didn't like it either. It, Metallica has been a very apolitical, famously apolitical band, but I think everyone knows James is probably a little more right leaning and the other guy is a little more left. Um, mm. So yeah, if you, when you pair that together, it's like, oh, okay, what are you complaining about? You know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. So it's like, it's like the guy at the office who's like, you can't even tell your secretary you like her dress <laughs> right. anymore. Exactly. Like, it's like, shut up, man. <laughs> like, find something else to be mad about. Right. Seriously. Yeah, exactly. But so I, I don't know for a fact, and maybe we'll never know. I, I'm at least going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's doing it from a centrist point of view. Right. Which is like, okay, go ahead and. I think I think that's the intent. I hope it is anyway. That's like, all right, because we are seeing a lot of it on both sides. Right. So cancel culture, ironically, has been embraced by the right a lot more than the left lately. You know, Bud Light, whatever else. Right. So I'm hoping that it's a centrist view of like, you know, hey, both y'all on both sides. Be careful because, you know, you're going to be the and that's the whole thing. Right. That ends with you are the witch you must burn. Right. So you can say get rid of it, but then you're going to be the one that's canceled. Yeah, sure. Right. So, yeah, Yeah. I I agree. I I would prefer they just stay away from it. But, you know, what are you going to do? Right. And I mean, I, I, the song rocks hard and like the message is it's, it's the context matters, you know, but like tr- truly the questioning, you know, uh, witch burning, like, you know, c- contextualizing our cancel culture uh, or, or, you know, comparing it to kind of the witch, witch burning era and, you know, questioning kind of mob mentality and not being not thinking critically, but thinking as a horde. Yeah. yeah, very valid. But yeah, that that yeah. Not, um not their strong suit. Comes from. James is right. at best when he's writing about his experiences. Mm. And they generally stay away from current topics and this is why because I, I, they're not good at it. I think Yeah, and I, I most would, people are better when they're talking about their own Exactly, their own right. Shit, you right. know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of a miss lyrically. It's just, you know, it fucking jams, but yeah. Yeah, I um Kind of not similarly at all, but, you know, let's jump to number three. Uh, pay the price. Deltron. Do you say 3030 or 3030? 3030. 3030. Figured. I mean, this is this is fun and it's definitely doing a job it wants to do. Like there's there's really fun like scratching. Um, This is at the for me, like 
lyrically, vocally, it's a little bit flat, um, just in terms of like the the shape um, of the like the phrasing. Mm -hmm. um, and the the lyrics are it's it's similar. It's like very very broad and, and super on the nose. You know, it's just kind of like um, to me very very broadly political and kind of like. Um, and, and fairly didactic in a way that didn't really work for me, though I like respect what's happening. And I think like, yeah, uh, contextually, I, I, I put this one slightly higher than the Metallica one, even though I think that for me, they had like a similar problem. But I mean, I enjoyed listening to it, you know, um, yeah, and it's good production. they're not wrong, right. <laughs> you know. Right. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious about about your um, about your thoughts, Tank. Uh, so the whole Deltron, Deltron 3030 thing is, it's weird. It lives in this semi-fictional, um, you know, it's its one of these gimmicks where, where Dell and the producer are in the year 3030. So it's like the songs, they kind of drift between, you know, uh, like sci-fi nonsense and, and not, right? So that's why it's hard to get a beat on sometimes exactly where, where it's going lyrically. Um, but yeah, I, I think... I just think the, the beats, the production, Dell's flow, like I've always liked it. Um, but yeah, lyrically it's hit or miss for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, that's really good context because I definitely didn't pick up on that. Um, and I guess if I had done more homework, I would have, I would have known more about the sort of like, right. Um, well, yeah. Future. I mean the, 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 the name of the artist, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but, there, but, there, but that's, we've talked about this many times on playlist challenge that, you're going in blind, right? And there's a lot of songs that I know I'm going to go back and say, oh, now I like it a lot because you don't know context, right? You're getting a list of songs and you look at them and unless you already know the artist, then yeah, there'd be no way for you to know. But um, yeah, but it, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, it's fun. I, I, and I, yeah, I'm, it was, it's, I'm, I appreciate getting the chance to listen to it. And now I'm going to go back and listen to more because I'm curious about this, the narrative arc. <laughs> yeah. First album better than the second, if you do dabble, by the way. Okay. There were only okay. two. Yeah. I'm I'm in. Yep. All right. Um, okay. Number two, Chuck Mangione. Give it all you got. God, it's so smooth. Um, it is. I, I have to admit, okay, when it first started, I was like, oh, great, hold music. Um, but, <laughs> but, but once we got into that soft, fuzzy trumpet, you know, I was like, okay, I'm home. And then when we get into the... You know, are are you familiar with the the term tutti in 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 music in jazz and classical? I am not. No, me either. Um, t u t t i is like it, it. I was okay. I played trumpet in like high school jazz band. So sorry for the flex. Don't be intimidated. <laughs> um, but, oh, step aside, but, everyone. <laughs> but I wrote on my list. I wrote. I love tutis. It's like when you have, um, especially across instruments, you have them uh, playing the same part so it's unison but across different instrumentals or you know oh, um, cool. sometimes even just within the section but having trumpet and sax uh playing that same those same riffs they're so technically intricate and so delightful and then have them take that and harmonize it oh delicious scrumptious i loved it so much um <laughs> Are you, so mellow i could listen over and over you know are you familiar with his uh any of his work or feel so good a, yeah, a okay. little bit just yeah, as a, that was like the one as big a trumpet hit. player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I a little bit. I mean, I've I'm trying to think of like jazz that I've I've I guess I've generally been more into like big band type jazz, like, you know, Duke Ellington and mm -hmm. um but yeah, I I I I loved this. I thought it was really fun. My only complaint um is it broke my cardinal rule which is don't fade out don't fade out don't fade oh, out yeah. ever i say if you i wrote this in all caps if you don't know how to end your song then you aren't done writing your song <laughs> <laughs> how do you play that shit live you can't you just play yeah, exactly off, a good which point. i have actually i did see who did i see 
actually do that um where i think it was Wynton marcellus where they actually did just like leave the stage playing um <laughs> but um so okay fair enough that's like an actual fade that works um but no i i hate fade outs so much that i almost put this lower but no i i thought it was really smooth and really lovely so i i kept it where it is but um that's my one that's my one like one thing is no fades but i but i still liked it wouldn't be an episode if I didn't throw in a random unsolicited metallic effect. But when it comes to fade outs, the only time I think it might be justified is on their album Load, Outlaw Torn, the last song fades out because they literally ran into the limit of a CD. Oh, uh, no kidding. So yeah. th- the song is like nine minutes, 32 seconds. And the original version is like 10 something. But they literally, they're like, okay, a CD is 76 minutes. We have to fade this out. And this song has to be the last. Last song of the album. Yeah. Yep. All right. Fair enough. All Fair right. Enough. So number um, and number one, which I I would have bet everything I have that this would not have been number one. Wow. Well, yeah. Number one. Honestly, I wrote under one one by a long shot. This is black sheep. Give me the finger. A job. A job. Okay. When we do a rise, it's time for brunch. Ham and eggs to pig's feet and Captain Crunch. Then we get dressed, the better, yeah, we get dipped. The hair gets brushed, the whiskers, they get clipped. Over to the mirror, yeah, we look okay. Dial tone 212 OJ, OJ, OJ. It's a daily thing for black sheep, my friend. Yo, driver, pull over, I need my midday Heineken. About to pout, no doubt, your wish. Clocking from a corner while you're eating a knish. Maybe another lifetime, G. I hope to see that you're... <laughs> so cheeky <laughs> so good I, oh, I love it it's so playful just like the whole time all these little winks in the lyrics you know this is just like such a, like just my favorite i mean it's like it's not it's not retro because it's of its time but hearing this mix from the top i'm just like oh that just like fat punchy bass the the way the the drums are mixed is just like such a such a phenomenal retro mix and this is my favorite style of vocalization in in rap and hip hop like i just like ugh it's just so delightful and it's just like the whole time they're just winking at you you know um it's so clever it's so it's so fun it's like it's so um yeah i don't know it's it's um it's it's strutting you know and um <laughs> it made me happy and i i, I really enjoyed this it's funny cuz i I was listening to this on the way to lunch today and I'm like, ah, I don't know if I should have given her this one. Like, cause I thought it's too, it's too like kind of just dirty and lightly misogynistic. <laughs> nah. And he says hose a lot. And <laughs> his own name is a reference to his penis and you know, but yeah, no, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, I, let's see. I'm, I, I do have the lyrics pulled up in front of me and I don't know. This this style of misogyny feels so charming in our current climate, you know? <laughs> yeah, Just like, that's true. The good old days of misogyny. For each box spring coil in my bed, I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> as long as everyone knows, you know? <laughs> like, as long as everyone's safe, it's okay. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like it just doesn't it doesn't feel all that problematic in the grand scheme. And it's 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 fun. You know, he's like big for his britches, but like he knows it. So I don't know. Right. It's it's right. fun. Yeah, it's a character. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like uh, it's this just kind of like sh- strolling like, you know, nice suit, nice watch. Just like I'm, I'm feeling myself. You know, and I'm like, that's cool. Um, <laughs> suit loosely. I'm picturing it in like the 90s way where it's like much oh, yeah. too big and oh, you roll yeah, yeah. up the sleeves. For you know? sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm I, I don't know. I don't know this artist like I don't know this. So this is just like me riffing on how I feel about listening to it. But I, I liked it and you, I'll listen to more. You know one song by this artist. I do. Oh, OK. Hold on. Because yeah. now we are going to rain dance Maggie this shit. Uh, stand by. OK. Yeah. I mean, you went to Michigan State. I feel like even in the, the same decade as I did, this song was a, a party. This would get the party popping off. I'm about to reveal how much time I spent at acapella parties. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Maybe wait for the court. Not, not yet. Nothing yet. Not yet. All right. What? Hang in there. Now you know how I felt. Brain Dance Maggie. <laughs> this is nowhere near Brain Dance Maggie. Yes, it is. Jesus. Oh. 
Okay, that's familiar. What about the engine engine number nine part? Hmm. I don't know where that falls in the four minutes. Maybe now? Next one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the club would just explode. Oh, yeah. To, to everyone just pogoing in. Right. Yep. All right. Venue agnostic. PTs, Landshark, Ricks. <laughs> Every yep. single fucking beggar's banquet, all of them. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely would not escape that. Um, not mad about it. No, it's. Um, I guess I just. I guess. Yeah, I guess I'm just a sucker for this for this retro style for this for this type of mix. You know, it's just like, ah, oh, God, what am I thinking about? Um, I'm gonna make uh, you a whole playlist of this stuff. Oh, there's great. a lot. Yeah, no, there's a lot. We uh, this was our this was our wheelhouse back in the day. Totally. Yeah. I think I just. I think I. I think. Uh, yeah, I missed out on this god it's it's like not it by today's standards it's not a good mix you know what i mean like <laughs> right. it's like but muddy like, yeah but it but it's but i don't mean that really because the truth because i think stuff that's like too clean and balanced is not as interesting yeah, yeah totally. you know like this this is like playing up exactly what it wants it's like it's um yeah i don't know it's i yeah i, well, I, I dig it, it <clears throat> to me it is the major disconnect with me uh for current hip-hop is that it, the current hip-hop isn't sample based it's drum programming mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. for the most part and actual like and it's synths and it's not there's no there's not even a scent of a real not real that's not what i'm getting at but just the 90s the 80s this era of everything like none of that is <laughs> live instrumentation it's all crate digging and you're getting the scratchy and the 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 imper imperfections I don't know I love that about yeah. this era of music totally yeah it, it feels um ugh yeah it just it's it's it feels like strutting like yeah, yeah. it's just this this <laughs> this kind of mix just struts in a way that like everything else is trying to smooth everything out you uh -huh. know and it's yeah. like no let's just like let's let's let it bop you know That's let's right. let it like let's... balloon where it wants yeah. to like, you know <laughs> yeah absolutely let's peacock a little. Yes. Yes. This is a Peacock song. That's what I like about it. Yeah. Um, I guess it also feels like, you know, um, oh God, you know, the, the UGK, uh, I choose you, you know, like where like, it's not at all like this, but that, that's the kind of like similar brand of misogyny. It's just kind of like, I'm the shit and I buy and crash cars and I have a lot of ladies right. on my arm, you know, yeah. but it's like, I don't know why that doesn't bother me. I don't know. You know, it's just like something about, I think it's just the peacocking where it's just kind of like, that's not even what it's really about. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. No, no it's cool. Yeah. Well, when it's so over the top, I think it loses some of its punch. You <laughs> right. know, right. It's sort yeah. of like a, because it's like caricaturing. It's, yeah. it's like now we have to like be so vigilant about all this like nefarious grocery uh -huh. that now I'm like, oh, when it's, when it's, so out and proud like that it's it's a caricature of of uh, problematic behavior and we can all just kind of be like yeah that's not cool <laughs> but <laughs> i hear you right <laughs> yeah all right so that's that's it that's the that's the playlist challenge right awesome yeah that's yeah. it that wraps everything up and that it was also super fun yeah you know, wraps up this episode so uh thank you very very much libby for coming on and spending time with us Wow, thank you, Tank and E. This is super fun. And I'm I'm really honored to be a guest on on your show. Well, hopefully we haven't scared you and maybe you'll come come back again someday. Oh god, if you'll have me. This Absolutely. was so much fun. Of course. Cool. All right, so thanks. And that will do it for this episode. And we'll be back next week with another one. That's right. Thanks, right. everybody. Bye-bye. Sick. Thank you. Bye. When I hit our sound, come on, everybody.